Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino induced drought together. EcoCash, live life the EcoCash way. The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola 7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello guys, how are you? My name is DJ Ola Seven Owen. We're Kwamadoda, the Chief A Marshall here on your number one podcast show in the land, and it is the segment, your favorite segment, uh, the Genius Kids Show, where we interact with uh, you know kids from all walks of life. You know they are very much talented. These kids, we have talent in painting, music, robotics, academics, you name them. And the show is getting better and bigger. Today, you know, on this show, I have a 13-year-old who has a natural talent for painting. Imagine, for painting. Not only that. So we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, that later on. And also, we can say it's an inborn thing, inborn talent. And not only that, he also plays, like I said earlier, uh, the piano and acoustic guitar. I'm telling you, I want painting, acoustic, you know, piano. I'm a piano, you know what I mean? <laughs> Help me welcome Fumai Chizonga on the Genius Kids Show. Welcome to the show, Fumai. Oh, thanks for having me. Ah, great, man. And uh, you look good. I like your, your hairstyle. Oh, thanks. Tell me, what is by the hairstyle? The hairstyle. Oh, I grew it myself. Uh -huh. like, um, I, I never really combed my hair, that's why. It's like, I got a thing called natural locks. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Wow, I like that. And how, how, how old are you? I'm 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So you're now a teenager. So at 13, you're just, you just graduated from 12, you know, 18. How does it feel to be in this teenager, you know, teen, teen, teen thing? It feels great, actually. Like, <laughs> strong and all that. What has changed? Mm -hmm. What has changed? Some ch any changes? Uh, a few. Uh -huh. uh, my voice, it's lower. Right. And got the body of a man. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's going to be interesting. I like that. I like that. And, you know, I want you to understand something. What's your favorite subject, you know, uh, at school? And uh, do they teach painting in school as well since you are into painting? My favorite subject in school is geography. Mm -hmm. And, no, they don't teach us painting at school. Mm -hmm. So why, 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 why painting? What inspired that? Painting inspired me because um, I've always been teased as a kid, mm -hmm. like being bullied and like pushed around mm. by some of my friends. Oh yes. 
then I said, no, I, I'm not going to do this. Mm. I'm, I know who I am. I'm yes. strong. Mm -hmm. So that's what inspired me to keep going. Yes. I, I, I like that, the boldness, you know, being a man enough. I, I, I like that part. Even, you know, some grown men out there, some of them, you know, that, that, that's, you know, bold. Like you said, you said, okay. So after being bullied, that's when you said, no. So tell me about the bullying part. The bully part. Um, I have I had friends as a kid, but like I was always small and like couldn't fit in. Yeah. Yeah, I was different. Mm -hmm. They would laugh at me because mm -hmm. I'm different. Yes. But I realized something. They're all the same. Mm. So I said, you know what? I'll show them the difference. Yeah. Who I am inside. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now you are showing them, you are, you are giving them hard time, right? I'm giving them hard time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I like that. You mentioned about geography. That was also my favorite subject, you know, in high school. Really? Yeah, my I like uh, geo, you know, because of the weather, um, you know, the rocks. Also, you know, I mean, weathering, weathering. weathering. Yes, yes, weathering, then the rocks and what else, you know. And um, I, mean, I remember this other time when talking about... Um, yeah, uh, meandering, geo meandering. Yes. You, you, uh -huh. you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my favorite subject. But why is it your favorite subject? I don't know. I guess like geography, it's the studying of Earth, and like the thing I love about Earth is that like the environment, yes. the, the colors, yes. the animals, and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I I like that. And to tell me something, you know, what type of music do you do you listen to? A little something called hip hop. Hip hop, hip hop. <laughs> you love hip hop. I love hip hop. Who's your favorite hip hop artist in Zim? Um, I don't actually have a favorite, mm -hmm. but I just listen. Like, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. random. Random, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Internationally, who you, who do you listen to? Internationally, um, uh, forgot the name of the artist though. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah. Okay. So let's get into painting. How did it all start? You know, um, the painting. The painting, it all started, remember what I said before about being teased and bullied? Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of my old schools, we used to do painting there. Mm -hmm. um, my friends always make fun of me because I I'd paint these little things that they wouldn't understand. But I could see them in my own way. Mm -hmm. Like, say, hey, I think this is good. Yeah. Then they see it differently. Mm -hmm. so then I said, okay, fine. If you guys see it's different. Mm -hmm. Well, I I love it for what it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So, any any paintings you have like right now that maybe you've auctioned or you have sold or you're just doing it for fun? Uh, yes, I actually have sold a few paintings mm. in auction. Yeah. Wow. So, what are the like the biggest surprise? The biggest surprise. The name. Okay, I've like, let me tell you one of them. It's called View from Mars. Mm -hmm. This is actually a great painting. It's like. Got planets of everywhere, wow. like stars. Wow! Yeah. Oh, uh, I would love to see that one. Mm. I would love to see that one. So, how has been? I mean, how has your family supported you in this journey? My family has always supported me by making sure I have a canvas and fresh, clean paint and mm -hmm. a smooth, brand new paintbrush, mm. and I just go with it. Wow. So you just need the resources. The resources. So they provide. They provide. What a you know a supportive family. Be shout out to you, Mama and I know that you are watching. Be shout out to you. Cross to you. <laughs> so as the first child in the family, you know, are there any challenges that come with uh, you know being the first child? Ah, uh, the firstborn. Well, what I've realized over my thirteen years of being the firstborn is, with age comes responsibility, mm -hmm. and I've learned from that, like. Your childhood is the greatest lesson one could ever have. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I tell myself that every day. Every day? Every day. So when you see your youngsters, your, your young ones, you know, um, is now a 13-year-old boy. What comes to your mind? I don't know. It's like um, they're not grown up like me, but they're still old. I know that they're, they're learning yes. in their own way. Yeah. Yes. They see things in their own way, and I want to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't want them to make the mistakes I did as a kid. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, no, that's that's great. And I'm talking to uh, Fumai Chizonga here on the All Seven Podcast Show, the Genius Kids segment. You know where we interact with these kids, and you know these kids are so amazing. Uh, I love the kids the most, honestly. I love the kids. So your artwork was auctioned um, in Lagos, Nigeria, and um, I mean at a renowned uh, children's art gallery. 
How was the experience, my guy? The experience was fire. Wow. Trust me. Wow. Like when I saw, when I heard about it, yes. I was like. Uh-huh. Oh, I, I finally get to do something I really yes, love. Yes. The world gets to see it. Uh-huh. So as I was painting, I said, hey, I'm, I'm doing it. Yes. Then as I finished, I said, look at this. Yeah. I did it. Yes. I, I know it feels good to be you know, on that international stage. Like Lagos. How did you make it to Lagos? It was fun, actually. But like, uh-huh. I, I don't know how, but I did it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how, but I did it. Okay. So can you walk me through your typical creative I know, process uh, from conception to completion? Okay. My creative process is um, every time I'm home, I whip out my earphones, mm-hmm. just listen to music, close my eyes, mm-hmm. think for a moment. If I see an image, I mm-hmm. capture it. Okay. If I capture it, I say, right, let's put this image on that canvas. Mm-hmm. And I like I find the angle, how I want to paint yes. it, the colors I need, mm-hmm. and yeah. Wow, that's big. So you close your eyes. So it's like moment of meditation. Moment of meditation. Wow, I I love that. I love that. So how do you overcome creative you know, blocks or challenges during your process of my creative blocks and challenges? Um, there's this friend of mine, or oh, it was a bad friend. They mm-hmm. said like telling me these things all the time, like bad things saying I can't do it and yes. all that. Mm-hmm. But there's a best friend of mine. Um, yeah. She told me that no one can tell you what your limits are. Yeah. No one. No one. No one. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, don't listen to those critiques. Well, yeah, just focus. Mm. Wow, I like that. I like that. And um, you know, are there any any habits, you know, uh you have, you know, while working on your art? The habits I usually have is just listening to music most of the time. Well, I would have gum with me, like to uh-huh. chew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Chewing> <laughs> oh, the, gum. Mm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What role does ex- experimentation, you know, play in your work? Experimentation plays a very big role in my work, actually. Mm-hmm. In one of my paintings, or the one I told you the before, View from Mars, to create that star-like feeling, I didn't have any of the equipment, so I used washing powder. Yeah. Okay. At, like from the bottoms, and yes. I t- like took it and then started like uh-huh. putting it there, then yes. made stars. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. And you know, I, I know that a lot of um, kids are watching and they're inspired, um, but I also want to understand, you know, how has your creative process evolved over the years? How has it evolved over the years? Well, I say it evolved from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Me growing up, the more I paint, mm-hmm. the more better I become. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm experienced in like how to use paint brushes, how they work, mm-hmm. like, and all that. Okay, so when did you start? Like exactly because it seemed like it's been years doing this. Mm, it's been yeah, years. yeah. How many years now? Um, I started at the age of six or seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, six or seven six years. Six or seven years old. So you started roughly when you were around six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Woo! Yeah, it's been you know quite a journey. Quite a journey. Yeah. So, who or what are your biggest uh, you know artistic influences? My biggest art artist influence influence is Leonardo da Vinci. Mm-hmm. The way he's made these paintings people have never seen before. Yeah. For example, the Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. And like when I saw that painting, I was like, wow, he did this. Yes. I said, okay, mm-hmm. maybe I can do something similar to uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Greater than it, who knows? Yeah. Then yeah. Then you started doing this. I started doing it. So like, far, do you believe you have surpassed that level of uh, Mona Lisa? Uh, no, not yet. I'm not still yet. learning. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still learning. Yeah. <laughs> but still. And uh, how do you find inspiration when it comes? I mean, when it seems uh, to to elude you. How do I find inspiration? Well, okay. The best friend I told you about, her name is Matipa. Mm-hmm. As a kid, when I was bullied and all that, she'd mm-hmm. be there. So then she told me never to give up. Mm. So I remember those words she told me. Then I was like, let me use that. Mm-hmm. Use that every day. I do a canvas. I feel down. I yeah. say, okay, she said, don't give up. Exactly. Keep going. Mm. Then yeah. Wow. So she seemed to be like your, 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 your real G. Real G. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, talk of inspiration. Can you just describe a moment of inspiration you know, that led to a breakthrough uh, in your work? Moment of inspiration that led to my breakthrough. Huh. 
I guess it was my parents telling me that you're better than you were before. Mm-hmm. And when I heard that, I was mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah. I heard that. I went for a walk. Mm-hmm. Like, as I, I look at like, my surroundings. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, look. I see people having fun and yeah. all that. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. So when it comes to, um, you know, these uh, arts that, that, that you're doing, like painting and everything, you know, sometimes people think, okay, someone would decide to say, I want to just do or focus on, say, historical stuff or just, um, you know, cultural or modern stuff. Mm. So how do you incorporate cultural and historical influence, influences into your art? I incorporate historical and cultural art by um, cultural. Um, I'm a Zimbabwean boy mm-hmm. and historical. I'm making history. 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 I, like, I like that. This is when really you say Zimbabwean way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's show the world the Zimbabwean way. The Zimbabwean we do way. things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's real talent. So what part of um, you know, uh, the creative process uh, do you find most satisfying? Part of the creative process which I find more satisfying is when I add details mm-hmm. in my paintings. And like it's nice and like quiet. And yes. Like, and I have time to myself and like like uh-huh. the details. Then the finish I love the most. When I say, "Wow, mm-hmm. I did this." Yes. Wow. Because of that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's wonderful. And how do you balance your know, planning and um, uh, spontaneity in creative your um, uh, creating your art? Okay, I balance that by, my mom told me this, the show must go on. If I have a plan and like something else comes up, I said, no, mm-hmm. stick to that plan. You'll use the other one next time. Yes. Because I didn't want to mix up my ideas. Mm-hmm. Like I said, let me just do one at a time. Mm-hmm. And who knows, maybe the one I had, uh, I put aside could yes. be greater than the one I had before. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. So if I say, okay, uh, uh, for my, can okay, you do this art for me? Are you able to do that or you just stick to what comes to your mind first? I can do that, actually. Mm-hmm. If someone asks me to do this, I say, okay, fine. But I, I find a way to do it. Mm-hmm. I go outside and I close my eyes and think again, mm-hmm. okay, this guy wants it like this, so exactly. how do I mm-hmm. do it like that? So, yeah. Are you also able maybe to, to, to draw um, a mind first? Like, this is all up, you know, on a nice canvas. Yeah, I'm able to, but like, I'm still learning about realism, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm able to do it. Yes. Okay, that's great. So, just take a short break and we'll be back just now. Now, I'm talking to Puma Chizonga here on the Genius Kids Show. I'm sure you are inspired, you're getting inspired, because, you know, he does a lot of things. Like, I'm a piano, he plays piano, uh, acoustic guitar, and also, you know, painting, a bit of painting. And finally, he can't demonstrate on this uh, show. But de- definitely, I'm, I'm sure he brought his uh, guitar here in the studio. So probably he might just sample a uh, beat for us when we come back after this short break. Stay tuned. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino-induced drought together. EcoCash. Live life the EcoCash way. Hello and welcome back to the Genius Kids Show here on your number one podcast show in the land, the Ola 7 podcast show. And I'm talking to Fumai Chizonga. You know, he's a 13-year-old boy. Super talented. He plays on a piano, like I said earlier. You know, acoustic guitar, as well as painting. So, wow. What a talented young boy. You know, the future is bright for these kids. The reason why we bring these youngsters on this show is to inspire your child as well, inspire, to inspire your kids as well, so that, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, no, you know, let them draw the inspiration. Let them just watch this show. They will get inspired. And, you know, my brother, you know, my young brother here, should I say my brother or my child? Because you are also the same age with my firstborn. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand, you know, you also play uh, the the piano, like I said. So that's a great thing, you know, because I, I don't know how it's, it's been played. I don't know how even to press the keys. I'm sure my fingers will just tick like, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and you can do that. Wow, that's great. And I must say, you are multi-talented. And when did you start playing the piano? I started playing the piano at the age of eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a kid. What drew you to it? What drew me to it? Um, instruments, technically. Like, the way um, I saw a guitar and the mm -hmm. rest, then I said, okay, mm -hmm. let me play those instruments. Yes. Then I had to start with piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So do you have a favorite uh, composer or musical era? Musical eras. Mm, composer. I don't think I do have uh -huh. Yeah. You, you don't have one? Yeah. Okay. So how have you, I mean, performed? Have you, have you, ever, have you, have you ever performed um, in public? Public, yes, I have. Like, lots of times, actually. And how was the response? Was awesome. <laughs> People are like, wow, this young boy doing this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, maybe have you ever performed as part of uh, the band or you're just doing a solo thing? I have actually a band. Mm -hmm. um, in 2022, I did this recital at my school mm -hmm. with the band. I did entire like songs, a song after song after yes, song. Yes, yes. It felt good. I wow. never felt so alive. Uh -huh. The crowd screaming. Yes. Taking pictures. Mm -hmm and all that yeah that's, that's amazing so how often do you practice and do you have any specific practice uh practices um practice techniques i mean um i already practice every day mm -hmm. like um i have a schedule like um first day i do piano second day i do guitar mm -hmm. then the third day there's another type of guitar i have mm -hmm. i'll explain that one later okay so i have like everyday thing mm -hmm. yeah okay it's now your your normal routine yeah normal routine Okay, so are there any warm up, you know, exercises uh, you find particularly effective? Yes, actually, there's called scales and arpeggios. Mm -hmm. um, take me through. Uh, I I don't understand that. <laughs> okay, I'll take you through it. Yeah, arpeggios are like when you move your fingers around. Mm -hmm. Then scales, it's the same thing, but like mm -hmm. going up and down and mm -hmm. up and down. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Mm, I think I should come for some lessons. You I want you to teach me. Mm. Maybe, guys, next time I'll tell you that I'm, I'm now a guru in this thing, you know, but you can need some common so that I can just be, you know. <laughs> so, you know, do you I prefer classical, jazz, or contemporary music? Um, when playing piano, mm -hmm. um, I like jazz. Jazz? Like, yeah, when playing piano. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried Ama Piano, the real Ama Piano? Yes, I have, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how, you know, how, how, how does it... Uh, come out when you're playing it? Yeah, at first it doesn't come out as well. <laughs> but in the end, it's all worth it. So I will, I will link you up with other producers, you know, the big producers we have here in Zimbabwe. So they say, okay, when uh, saying um, Ja Praiser, or we say, for example, Shasha, you know, the, you know, you know, yeah, you know Shasha? Yeah. Yeah, Shasha is releasing new music. Say, okay, Shasha, can you just, you know, uh, invite... Um, to my to come and play i'm a piano for you so you say okay this is our real g there you know not tira not dj vaporisa mm. not uh you know a cup that is more but for my on the i'm a piano beat i would love to, to to hear that so is there any uh is there a specific piano piece that resonates with you emotionally yes it's the zimbabwe national anthem oh Every time I play that in on the piano, mm -hmm. it's like it speaks to me. Wow. Like it tells me what I'm supposed to do in Zim, what I'm not supposed to do in Zim, mm -hmm. and what I'll be in mm -hmm. Zim. Mm -hmm. mm, that's that's deep. That's powerful. The national anthem. Yeah. Hey, I don't want to hear this again. <laughs> So I hope you're playing it nice when, whenever you play that, that, that piano, you know, that the national anthem on, on the piano. Yeah. So how do you approach, you know, interpreting a, a, a musical score? Um, I don't actually like, like reading the musical scores because mm -hmm. like I, I love to use my ear. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. listen and mm -hmm. play. Yeah. 
the ear. Yeah, like I just love to use my ears mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. No, that's that's great. So, how do you typically play the guitar? You know, finger picking, uh, strumming, and also uh, flat picking or mix. Um, I do. I usually do strumming and mix. Well, like yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I play Both. around with it. Yeah. At the same time. Well, uh, strumming, yes. Yes. Like, yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, my guy, you're talented. You are talented. And you won't understand this, guys, if you are not into music, if you are not into <laughs> producing as well as maybe artists, uh, but guitarists or whatever. But uh, yeah, you would understand. You would understand. But how, how difficult is it to, to learn uh, to play um, a piano? I mean, piano and um, a guitar. Because probably there's um, a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old who also wants to be like you. Okay, my advice is you should learn with piano first. Because mm -hmm. I've realized something about piano. It mm -hmm. links all instruments together mm -hmm. to one big thing. It makes it easier for you to walk. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. actually, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have um, a light picking, strumming attack, uh, a heavy attack, or something in between? A light picking, strumming attack. I, not those like... People who like rock and all yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, like I said, come on, Arguchi Maya, but I'm not about this simply, Raji. Nya Zach. Timo, that's what I'm going to say. But before we get there, who are your favorite uh, acoustic guitar players or musical, you know, influencers or influences? I've got one. His name is Carlos Guitar. Carlos Guitar. Yeah. So I call him Uncle Carlo. Mm -hmm. Uncle, yeah. He used to teach me as a kid. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, yeah, I'm now on my own. Mm -hmm. I start walking. Yeah. Do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, have you explored alternate, uh, you know, uh, tunings or unique playing styles? Uh, actually, alternate tunings. I find ways to play better. Mm -hmm. This is actually why I got a ukulele. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, a ukulele is a tiny guitar from mm -hmm. the islands. Yeah. Or from, from the island? The islands, yeah. And it's not common here in Zimbabwe. It's not common here in Zimbabwe. So probably you made the first one or amongst the few. Amongst the few. Yeah, the few. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So what acoustic guitars uh, do you own? Is, the, own? is that the the one you mentioned only or you have others as well? No, we actually have four at home, but I hmm. own two. Okay. So, yeah, one is my little brother's. Mm -hmm. or he's learning to play it. One's my dad's. Mm -hmm. And one is mine. Mm-hmm. And I've got the other one I told you about yes, the UK, yes. but it's like a tiny one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, how, you, you know how to how to play all these. Yeah, I know how to all play of them. All of them. Okay. Are there any specific accessories or you know effects uh, pedals you use to enhance your sound? I've seen yeah. Machiso playing do 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 something like that. You know, is just you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So do you have something like that? Uh, yes, it's called a pick. Uh -huh. I'll say like the tiny little thing. I just use it. Or it actually makes it louder, mm -hmm. like when I'm playing music, so that people can hear. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great. So, do you have you know any uh, memorable stories related to playing the acoustic guitar? Yes, I do actually. Mm -hmm. it was during the recital mm -hmm. I told you about. Yeah. Like it was fun, the crowd and all that screaming. Yes. Like me playing songs for them. Uh huh. And it was. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So, do you have, you know, a light picking strumming attack? Yes, I do. The light picking strumming attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Eh, Panabaga, don't you go to the guitar, Timbons, Waga, Sempon, Pichana. And I know that you don't do this alone. When you are playing your, your guitar, you might need someone who is also, you know, uh, just some vocals and yeah. stuff. Do, but do you also sing? Uh, yes, I do. Oh. I started singing at the age of seven. Seven. My mom put me on stage. Yes. Oh, <laughs> just I, like that. Just like that. Say, do it. Yeah, do it. And you managed to do it. I managed to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so what song did you perform? Um, on stage. Mm -hmm. um, I mostly was doing Christmas carols as a kid. Yeah. And like other songs. Uh -huh. uh, the Zimbabwe National Anthem. 
Yeah. Yeah, I see. So let me just uh, invite the mama to come on the show. Mama is going to do the vocals while it's uh, Fuma is playing the guitar. It's going to be fun. Let's enjoy. So just a short break. I'll be back. Every dollar sent home from the diaspora by your loved ones represents their hard work and commitment to ensuring that you're all taken care of. That's why we want to ease their experience and make it more convenient. With Sasai Money Transfer, sending money from the diaspora is free and you receive the money straight into your EcoCash USD wallet, ready for you to spend and cash out for free. That way, you can receive money to help you alleviate the impact of the drought on you and your family. Buy groceries, pay school fees, renew your insurance, pay bills and more within a few taps on your phone. And you're guaranteed access to USD cash from any registered EcoCash outlet nationwide. Tell your family in the diaspora to send money with Sasai Money Transfer today. Let's fight the El Nino induced drought together. EcoCash, live life the EcoCash way. Welcome back to the Genius Kids Show. And today it's a different show altogether. Like I told you, it's Fumai Chizonga on this uh, uh, show. And he's about to play his guitar. But you may be wondering, and what a surprise! There's a familiar face on the screen right now. Adiona Chizonga, no mama, you know, wife to Munya Chizonga. So, that's how good they guys. It's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Munya Chizonga's uh, child and, and the wife on the set right now. What a talented family, guys. What a gifted family. I love that. I love that. I wish that is right to go and did it say the child is talented, the mama is talented, and what, you know? So, okay, just. Give us whatever that you guys have for us. Okay, so the song I'm playing is called Another Day in Paradise. Uh -huh. I've played it for my grandfather's uh -huh. 75th birthday. Wow. Which was last, last month, actually. Yeah, right? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, take it away. She calls out to the man on the street Sir, can you help me? It's cold and I've nowhere to sleep Is there somewhere you can tell me? He walks on, doesn't look back He pretends he can't hear her Starts to whistle as he crosses the street Seems embarrassed to be there Oh, think twice It's just another day for you and me in paradise Oh, think twice It's just another day for you you and me in paradise. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what a masterpiece! <laughs> I really enjoyed that one. You know, um, Mazuka's called Mira. You know. <laughs> Exactly. I was like, okay, let it flow. Okay, I'm in it now. Okay, I'm feeling it. <laughs> oh, nice. You should have joined then. You see, but uh, you know, I, I, my voice is bad. I would have spoiled the whole thing. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much, Mama Adina, for coming. And, you know, and I, I know you're raising these kids well. Thank you. Thank you. I was really nervous because Nanda Topo instruction in yes. today is about me and, and me and me. Exactly. So I was backstage <laughs> there, you know, cheering him on. I didn't know I was going to be out. Yes, of course. But <laughs> yeah. I no, you have to do it. Right. Thank you. And I, I, I like your voice, by the way. Thank but you. You should give us more music, right? What's yeah. stopping you now? 
Honestly, it's a love and hate relationship with the industry. Yes. But with these guys, there's no way I can stop yes. being in the industry yes. because of them. Yes. Now it's inborn in mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I can't stop. So yes. now I'll keep, because of them, yeah. I'll keep pushing. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that. Thank so, you. guys, you'll be seeing Adiola Beck <laughs> on this big screen. You know, like she promised to do. Because of these kids. Because look, back then, I had more mumba already. So, my piano, I had a dead. So, guys, why not? And thank you so much for, for coming, uh, my mom. We really appreciate it. You. you know, thank you so much for my for gracing this show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure hosting for my Chizonga, guys. Until next time, my name is DJ Oda 7 Owen. We're Kwama Dondo, the Chief A Marshal on your number one podcast here in the land. And this segment is one of my favorite because I love the kids. It's called the Genius Kids. We bring the Genius Kids. Is the name the genius kids? Angas Rambe would be for my genius Indian guys. Angas Rambe. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye bye. the little things that make us giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.